Hazrat Malik bin Aus bin Hadassan reports Muhammad bin Jubair mentioned some part of this hadith to me so I set out till I reached Malik bin Aus and asked him about this hadith he thereupon said one day I was sitting in my house the day dawned and a messenger of Hazrat Umar Farooq radhiyallahu anhu came and asked me to visit the chief of the believers I went along with him and reached there to find Hazrat Umar radhiyallahu anhu sitting on a bed made of date palm tree covered with no sheet and he was reclining against a leather pillow I greeted him and sat down he said O Malik some persons of your people came to me and I issued orders to give them some wealth so you should take it and distribute it among them I said O the chief of the believers you had better ask someone else to do so he said O the bondsman of Allah jalla jalaluhu take it while i was sitting there with him the doorman yarfa came and submitted do you grant hazrat usman hazrat abdul rahman bin auf hazrat zubair and hazrat saad bin abi waqas the permission so as to see you he said yes and he gave them permission so they entered and sat down after greeting after a while yarfa came again and submitted do you allow hazrat ali and hazrat abbas radhiyallahu anhu to come in he said yes so they were permitted they both came in greeted and sat down hazrat abbas radhiyallahu anhu said o the chief of the believers kindly settle a dispute between me and him hazrat ali they had a dispute regarding the property of banu nadir which allah jalla jalaluhu had granted to his apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam thereupon the group comprises hazrat usman and his associates said o the chief of the believers judge between them and make them satisfied with each other hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu said be patient i adjure you by allah jalla jalaluhu by whose permission the earth and the heaven exist do you know that allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam said we the prophets alaihi wasallam have no higher rather whatever we banquet is arms and allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it about himself the group of hazrat usman radhiyallahu anhu said of course he said thus then hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu turned to hazrat ali and hazrat abbas radhiyallahu anhu and said blessing you under an oath i asked you do you know allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said so they both said definitely he has said so hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu said Now I will discuss this matter with you. Undoubtedly, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu declared the property of a, a special right of His Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and did not give anyone anything out of it. Then He recited, "And whatever spoils Allah gave to His Apostle from them, you rushed neither horse nor camel upon it. Yes, but Allah gives control to His Apostle over whomsoever He pleases." and allah almighty can do everything surah al-hashr verse 6 so this property is especially for allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam by allah jalla jalaluhu he sallallahu alaihi wasallam neither deprived you of it nor granted it to anyone preferring him to you but he sallallahu alaihi wasallam would keep on distributing it amongst you till only this property the gardens of khaybar and fadak and some pieces of lands in madina munawwara remained out of it so allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam would keep some of its revenue for the yearly expenses of his family and spend the rest of its revenue in the way of allah jalla jalaluhu as arms are given and allah's apostle kept on doing so during all his lifetime i adjure you by allah jalla jalaluhu do you know it the people replied in the affirmative then he said to hazrat ali and hazrat abbas radhiyallahu anhu i blessing you under an oath ask you do you know it hazrat umar radhiyallahu anhu added then when allah jalla jalaluhu called his prophets to him hazrat abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu said i am the successor to allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he took over it and managed it in the way allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do and allah jalla jalaluhu knows he was true pious rightly guided and just in this affair thereafter hazrat abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu passed away so i am his abu bakr's successor i have kept it in my custody for 2 years managing it 
in the same way as Allah's Apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do and then Hazrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu used to do and Allah jalla jalaluhu knows the best that I am true pious rightly guided and the follower of the right in this matter now you have come to me and are talking to me in this connection whereas your cause and case are similar o abbas you claim a share out of your nephew's property and this matter has brought you here whereas hazrat ali radiyallahu anhu demands his wife's share out of her father's property but i have already told you that allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam said we the prophets alaihi wasallam leave no hire and whatever we banqueth is arms so when i deemed it right i handed it over to you imposing this condition that you would keep allah's pledge and covenant in view and manage it in the same way as allah's apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam would do hazrat abu bakr radiyallahu anhu would do and as i have done it before giving it in your custody whereat you both said hand it over to us we will do the same so i placed it in your custody so i ask you placing you under an oath whether i have handed it over to you on this condition the group replied in the affirmative then facing hazrat ali and hazrat abbas radiyallahu anhu hazrat umar radiyallahu anhu said i ask both of you placing you under an oath where i have placed it in your possession on this condition they both replied in the positive he then said why do you want from me a decision on different lines when it has been decided so by allah jalla jalaluhu by whose decree both the heaven and the earth exist i will not pass any decision other than it on this issue if you don't feel up to managing it return it to me i alone will manage it sahih bukhari hadith number 3094